if you don't grow yourself and your knowledge while you grow your money, the energy gets out of whack. You won't be a proper steward, and you'll find a way to lose it one way or the other. Hence, why people that win the lottery, lottery all that. athletes, yeah. Because but, but who else is teaching? Like, I don't know. Because yeah. I remember a co- uh, I think it was my mentor. He said to me, he said, "No, it was Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn had this great line. He said, "You should hope if somebody gave you a million dollars, you become a millionaire really quick." And I just love that frame because he's like. Just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you're a millionaire. A millionaire knows how to make the million dollars become they become valuable enough to attract the money. Hey man, thanks for the hat and the t-shirt so that we could, you know, bro out. Oh, totally. That be twinsies. <laughs> yeah. How's it being, uh, Mandartel? Dude. Yeah. So we, I get on your elite coaching, which I'm I'm in elite coaching. Yeah, you're one of my clients. Love it. And my buddy. Love the yeah. program. It's amazing. Uh, so much bang for the buck, so much good energy. And I like, you, I was at your house, so I just opened <laughs> with true Martel style, right? Like tons of energy and coming in hot and uh, roasted you, which is just, and you know, I only roast the ones I love, bro. Oh, I know it. I, I think it's the number four, number three or four, maybe five. So, yeah, it's an honor, man. It's always, it's always fun showing, showing your craft to my, my audience. So one of the things I want to do is I'm rewriting Killing Sacred Cows, mm. my First book, New York Times bestseller, and wow. what I, you know, in the case studies the first time around, it was pretty much just case studies of people that were doing, you know, cool things. But at the time, I was super young; I was in my twenties. And what I want to do is step it up to people who are living at the at the highest level, so that we can create a new standard. And I feel like that's something that you do in your life. And so one of the chapters, and I label the chapters as the myth. Okay. So one of the myths is it's all about the numbers. Mm. So like people think, like I think the things that are most important in our life, we can't, can't measure, quantify, right? Yeah, they're not quantified. And I want to just hear like, how do you view money? What do you think money is? How do you describe it? What? How do you internalize it? Like, mm, that's a beautiful question. Um, you know, as you ask the question, I go straight to energy. I think that money is a form of capturing energy, and it's like, uh, it's both. Uh, a way for me to buy energy for me. It's a way for me to store energy. I can trade yeah. it. It's a is a physical, mechanical energy of labor. It's also a creative energy of ideation. Um, but that's the way I think about it. And I think like what's cool is to consider that like every day there's a trillion dollars that exchange hands every day, and it's available to all of us if people are willing to like lean in and figure out how to become more valuable or to create the skill set of value, which is kind of like figuring out how to turn the knob on the radio to the right you know, frequency. Yeah, frequency and channel so that you can like pick it up. So how did you, you do that? How did you figure that out? Man, it's been a journey though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like if I go back to in my twenties, because I can almost I almost look at my life in like these five year chunks. It started off by just um, creating some space from the negativity, right? So I grew up in a really challenging environment, hanging out with people I shouldn't have been, you know, got in trouble with the law and drugs and that kind of stuff. So it's like step one was just like environment cleansing. So that that was probably 20 to 25, 17 to 25. Then it was, okay, thoughts. So prior to, th like, I didn't mm -hmm. even think that thoughts were a thing. It turns out that your thoughts, you know, <laughs> quality of your thoughts dictate the quality of your life. So quality I would of say, your like, questions, quality of your thoughts. All of it. So yeah. 25 to 30 was very thought focused of like, hey, let's create a vision board. Let's create goals. Let's, you know, manage our projects. Let's be intentional about what we focus on. Let's stop listening to the news, you know, like all that stuff. Right. So that, that was 25 to 30. I'd say 30 to 35 was the beginning of, how do I tap into the higher energy levels that are always around us, right? What some people will call the universal mind or universal consciousness or source or whatever. So like a spiritual component. What did you start doing to make that happen? I went to a Tony Robbins event and that was where I kind of felt for the first time in my life, this concept of source, right? Or, or, or like full flood of gratitude. And it wasn't as profound as I've had since then, but that I, I still remember. That like, was the crack. Dude, I felt it. Like once I felt it, I was like, whoa, that's what it is? Like this this pure oneness, this this gratitude for all of it. That was like, okay, how do I live in that place? And you know, so that was like 30 to 35. And 
you know, we started having a young family and a kids and, and like just trying to be really intentional about the energy and the perspective I was bringing into the family. Because now when I had my first son, it was like for the first time in my life, I'm responsible for someone that will live and create way past my time here on Earth. Like that was a big revelation. Like my son, Max, taught me by his birth. You, this is bigger than you, ding dong. Like, Dan, you think? No, this is generation like multi like how you show up for that kid is going to set a completely different trajectory for hundreds of thousands of people into the future right granted if you know that was what i knew at the time now you know i think i've evolved in a little bit different but that was but that was progress that was yeah. moving beyond you know reactionary product Zero. of the environment yeah, i got really all curious kind of about things. emotional like and dude i use it all the time so just like anytime i feel emotions come up i'm like ooh, that's interesting the presence power of now so like and then and then just evolved into like okay how can i play with this alchemy like it's all there how can i like use it to create and design and that's where like you know 35 to 40 and i'm 44 like I just continue to the the financial stuff. I think, you know, there's just there's just different levels, right? Where you like literally live, you know, probably in debt, not even paycheck to paycheck. You're like going backwards every month to eventually like living paycheck to paycheck, probably making some money, buying stupid. Like I went through all those stages to eventually having a windfall of like surplus, but then not really having the proper mindset to like luckily I one. One thing I did that my one of my first mentors, Ken, said to me, he said, take half and put it away. Don't don't mess with it. Because he said a lot of people can create wealth. They can't keep it. He said, at minimum, don't pour all of it back into your next company, because that's what a lot of people do. So he gave me at least that advice. Hey, take half of it. Put it in an index fund. Don't think about it. You don't need to go become a professional investor. Like, you're not that smart. I said, well, I want to do angel investing. He said, OK, we'll take a piece of it and do angel investing, but don't. Don't mess with half of it. Okay, that was really good advice in hindsight. Trust it, blind faith, didn't know if it was good advice. And then eventually you get to a place where you live in a way, in a, in a, like my lifestyle today, I'm at a, I'm like, there's a surplus, right? Yeah, how much, how much does money govern, dictate, or inform your actions right now? Z like, Zero. That's financial freedom, right? So this is the crazy thing. Most people believe that financial freedom is money in a bank account. Oh, that's interesting. Or yeah. an amount of money, but it's when money is no longer the primary reason or excuse we do or don't do that's something, cool. which means it's not about the numbers. Oh, that's so good. Right? So like... And it's funny because it's a psychological thing because I would say... It's I'm a state of being. I'm married to a beautiful woman who is incredibly evolved that still asks me, how much is that? And I go, why does that matter? We were we were literally going to rent a movie on Saturday, and it was twenty four dollars. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. Apple, they like, and Canadian dollars was like three cents. It was like four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, it was. 20, yeah, it's real money. <laughs> and uh, few loonies. yeah, and the toonies and loonies, and and I was like, babes, like, we're what are we doing? Like, you want the movie? Ah, oh, I don't want to pay twenty four dollars to rent a movie because you, you, rentals used to be four bucks, but right. all of a sudden now they became twenty four. And for her, she she almost stopped herself from getting the movie she wanted to get. And it was fascinating to even watch that. Like, I'm not wasteful, right? Like, I just bought a car, like, but I'm not buying it. Like, it's it's used. It's a good deal. Like, I'm not wasteful. Well, even the questions you were asking of, like, what's something that I could love and enjoy and share and have it actually hold or gain value? That was you it. You added. See, yeah. it's a consideration still. Money yeah. is a consideration. Yep. It's just not the, the consideration. consideration. That's a good And that's stuff. a key distinction. And so I think that most people, when they find out that I've been in the money world, think I'm really amazing with spreadsheets and that I'm really good at looking at all the details of numbers. I actually have people that are really good at that. I just understand it as a concept mm. and a philosophy. And it's more about the human psyche and the human being. And when, like you, you've said this, and I've had people say this to me, is I think that in your life and in my life, when I made the biggest investments, my life changed immediately when they were in me, big dollars towards me. And before I ever did anything with the money I, I invested mm. into a program or into a, a mastermind, it's like I just showed like I'm worth that. Yeah. Somebody said once they said that transformation happens at the transaction. I really like that. Right. Because we, they, we just said it. it's like we're telling ourselves we have value to invest in, we are worth it. Right, so, so check this out. Like, this is one of the biggest money myths out there. 
and most people hold this so dear and they will defend it all day long and it's that compound interest is valuable mm. like they think compound interest is valuable but how long does it take for compound interest to work a long time what's going to happen between now <laughs> and a long time with AI, with technology, with disruption, with yeah. family. And so I think that compound interest slows down the compounding of our growth because the best way to compound is to do the very thing that you teach. You invest in yourself, grow your life, and when you grow your life, you grow your money, you grow your tribe, and you grow yourself. And when you grow yourself, you actually have a way better life and yet everybody thinks it's about these numbers in a bank account yeah, yeah. at the expense of their own self and life dude i love listening to you on this topic like you have such a beautiful way of thinking about it that is i mean it's just again people think financial planning financial maturity that is about some kind of like you know thesis around investing and it's like Yes, no, right? It's like yeah. investing, but the what you call investing, what I call investing are two different things. Cause like, you know, to your point, some kid called me up the other day, he's like, I got 50 grand, what should I do with it? I'm like, go invest in yourself. Yeah. They're like, they were expecting me to tell them what stock to buy. I'm like, dude, go be That's, better. We've been indoctrinated to think that investing equals stocks. But I'm like, what if we looked at ourselves as a stock? Mm. How would we treat that stock to appreciate it? Oh, that's a good frame. It's right, kind of like the health of like a race, you know, million dollar racehorse. Right. Yeah. And and so when I when I witness your life and when I learn from you and when I'm inspired by you, like the thing that resonates the most that that you say is like I just work on myself and I bring people along for the ride. Yeah. And the more I grow myself the more everything grows. Mm -hmm. And so like when you enter a room, you can feel that energy when you're in a room. I think when I enter a room, people can feel the energy when I enter the room because it's not just the dollars we have in the bank account, it's the energy that we have as a human being mm -hmm. that actually you know, opens that up. And when I spoke at your Empire event, I walked up on uh, to the, and I had said, I said something I had never said before in the moment. The first words out of my mouth was, wealth is a byproduct of a life well lived. Mm -hmm. like, that was the first time I just said that. It just kind of hit me on the way up. I was like, most of us think, erroneously that wealth is about net worth. Mm. But one thing is people don't even really know a lot about your venture fund. It's not something you talk about a, oh. a ton, yet they're getting all this value from you. Like it's not. But do you want to know, and I, I remember you sharing that, and it's funny because you're such a, you're such a master at your craft that I don't know like when you say something, if it's the first time you said it or you've like analyzed it and you, because I know that you do the work. And when you said that, it was funny because a life well lived creates the energy to your point that that has people want to work with you. So like this is what people don't realize is when I think of like my my frequency is what I frequently see or, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. Right. Like my energy attracts the people that want to co-create with me. Jay-Z can't put out a song without Guru, his producer. He's not sitting there on the boards. Right. And a life well lived where you are an example of expression, expansion, of joy, literally attracts my business partner, Kevin, who runs our hold co, yeah. you know, or Todd, who runs my media company. Like none of those people at that level. And guess what? They're the ones that are creating the wealth, not Dan. Dan, Dan is a... A You're a catalyst. You're a catalyst. I'm just out there saying, hey, who wants to build this with me? Do you want to do this? Like, what is your genius? Oh, that's your genius. This is my genius. Could we collaborate together? I don't. Collaboration over competition. Yeah, there's literally, I'm like, if I can help enough people become rich, and I'm like so, unapologetic about this. Yeah. I want you to be rich. You know this. Yeah, Everybody yeah. should be rich. Because I know that on the back end. Because everyone can be rich because of velocity. Let's the more times it. money exchanges hands. Yeah, and I love you we and you're my life. Wealthier. Go be rich so we can be rich together. Let's go. Let's go race our jets in the sky. I, I would love to do that. I want to. I want to. I want to drive around in our supercar. I told the team yeah. here we're going to fill up the whole parking lot. They literally where I just parked. Yep. That whole row is going to be in supercars, and I'm going to love on it. And I'm going to. And we're all going to. And we're going to bring the kids out. It's going to be just a joyous event, because that excites me a lot more of saying how do I help everybody get rich yeah. than me trying to accumulate another dollar. So think of this context. Most people, if they believe that that um, it's all about the numbers, then what they believe is first, 
we've got to reduce our burn rate. Oh, that's so good. And eliminate expenses, so which gets good. us into isolation, which destroys collaboration. Yeah. And it creates a loneliness and a grind. And this is where I'm annoyed by people that yeah, wear the grind as a badge. Yeah. To it's, it's like with buy back your time. You, I think you say something like, yeah, if you're the one that, that's working 80 hours a week when it could have been done in 30, then you're kind of a jack. You know, like that's not a badge of honor. It's a badge of stupidity. Yeah. And and stop bragging about it because it's not really healthy for you. Well, part of it's because if we believe that it's all about the numbers, we think to raise the number, it's two things, cut back and work harder. And those two things are so hand in glove, because if we cut back, we have to work harder. Oh, that's good. And now we're working harder at the expense of lifestyle, which gets people to believe in a concept called retirement. The only reason anyone wants to retire is because they do things they don't want to do on a regular basis, trading time for money, they get burned out, their health suffers, and they think one day, someday, I can finally live the life that you actually could have lived earlier and made more money with, and then didn't retire because you're still in the world of value creation. Because here's the thing, Dan at 44 is more valuable to the world than Dan at 34 because of the wisdom, insights, and your ability to share what you've done with your social media, what you've done with your elite coaching program, what you've done to build SaaS Academy. You've done that, and instead of just building companies that you exited, which were great for the people that were investors and working in that business, you said, I'm going to improve the industry, not just my business. And if you chose to retire after those exits, the entire industry suffers. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so selfish and, and it's not self-aware to think that retirement is a valid concept. It's a concept of the selfish. industrial age. It's selfish. It's selfish and I love what you said. Yeah. Dan at you know, 44 is more valuable than Dan at 34. Dan at 64 is going to be crazy valuable. Why would I take myself out of the economy? Because your, your mentor gave you good advice at the time, which was take half of it and put it somewhere that, that you don't really have any control over. Yeah, I don't want to lose it. Because you won't lose it. Now, Dan at 44, that doesn't make sense anymore because you become a much better investor. Totally. And so now, Dan at 44, if you said, well, I'm going to put money in an index fund, I'm going, why? You're yeah, funding yeah. <laughs> companies that you don't even care yeah, about. I would never do that. But, but you know, that was good advice at, at the, the maturity time. that you're yeah, at. Just don't lose right? it. And so sometimes, like, I'm really harsh on RRSPs and qualified plans. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't want people to feel bad if they started there, because I started there, too. Yeah. I started putting money in there. That's better than nothing, yeah. but it's not the best. No. And if we get so attached to our ideas, that's why the book's called Sacred Cows, we don't question those ideas to defend our current belief system, and we don't evolve in consciousness mm. and value. And what we do is we stay in the pain mm. to defend our limited actions. It's interesting, the whole idea of like getting into a rhythm of questioning the beliefs. Like that's, that's a very advanced move. Well, if you're advanced, one, you can acknowledge and appreciate other people. People that aren't advanced can't give gratitude towards others because they think if they acknowledge someone else, they've somehow diminished themselves. And what I found is, as you know, we're all one. When we can acknowledge greatness in another, it's only because we see it in ourselves. So good. And so that's like that's pretty profound. Yeah. The second thing that's really helpful, because I know a lot of people are amazed at how much you put yourself out there and they're scared to put themselves out there. But I'm always like, anyone that judges me online, it has nothing to do with me and everything to do with them. Mm -hmm. So imagine if that I live my life based upon someone else's scarcity and their limitations, and I try to appease someone that's living from a low level of consciousness, we become the lowest common denominator. And I think it's so critical to challenge the status quo because most financial gurus go to the lowest common denominator. So let me use an example. This is a, you know, I'm going to be really clear about this because someone asked me the question two days ago. They're like, do you think that Dave Ramsey is out of integrity and incongruent because what he does versus what he teaches is so different? I said, well, he makes $600 million of revenue in his business. He is an intellectual property master with tons of books. One of the best. And he owns real estate. Yeah. To me, those are the three biggest assets. Yet he promotes mutual funds that are loaded, right? And budgeting. These two things don't lead to wealth. They just get a train wreck on track. And he's speaking to the lowest common denominator. People that are in the train wreck. The problem is 
if we speak to the lowest common denominator as if that's the universal truth, we lose progress. But because people are afraid if you speak to a higher level that people will make mistakes, guess what? Mistakes are the lessons. Mm. Mistakes are required for progress, and yet we shield people from mistakes because we think that they can't handle it, which weakens everyone. So I'm, I'm pretty opinionated on this whole thing. Like I think he's probably the best in the world at getting a train wreck on track, but the problem is if you followed his advice, you would completely live in scarcity of elimination and no one shrinks away to wealth. What, but he probably knows that. He he does, but like he's so like but demonstrative but, but, about his philosophy. But when he comes when you come into his programs, I wonder if he has like a different like, okay, now that we've gotten this taken care of. I don't know. I just know that like when people that were his educators that were yeah. licensed came through my workshops. Yeah. A lot well, of tears, a lot of, a lot of breakthroughs, right? Yeah. Because like and, and so what I'm what I'm saying is like we all have a responsibility for our own prosperity, and anytime we think we're not responsible for it, then we're relegated to the low common denominator. Mm. Like one thing I know for sure is budgeting doesn't work long term. Yeah. Budgeting it just doesn't. Like like one time I was hanging out with you and you're like, hey dude, are you getting enough protein in? Because you know, you and your macros and uh, <laughs> and I was like, it's just a shift to think about getting enough protein versus restricting calories. Mm -hmm. Restricting calories feels like scarcity, and then I end up wanting more, where getting enough protein feels like more my expansion. style of expansion, and just a little switch like that can make all the difference. And but when you front load your proteins and you can fill in the cows later and you're fine. And the reality, our biggest issue around health isn't calories, it's processed food mm. that our body doesn't recognize. So it's not that we're actually eating a lot more calories. We're eating calories our body cannot digest, yeah. which creates obesity. Yeah. Right. And we're sedentary and all these other things. And by the way, you know, you were sick once and 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 I'm like, how are you doing? You're like, well, my me being sick is still probably much higher energy than most of the population. You know, you <laughs> arrogant prick. That? Yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> but what I mean it's true. But, but it's true because because you you make choices. Yeah. And most people's choice in their mind is I don't have enough, I'm scarce, I've got to conserve, I've got to reduce. It's all related to how they view money, how they view health, and how they view relationships from a place of scarcity, and it destroys everything. Mm. Not so that I have good, any man. opinion or passion about nah, it. It's, it's cool, dude. It's like, I think that's that would be like the last phase of my relationship with money is really about, you know, the the words the energy the 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 time even even just like who i model right like i i know myself i'm a big uh m the number one thing that i can do for progress for me is proximity to people that have a that have achieved a thing right i mean if you look at my trainer alan he's 250 pounds mr olympia so he trains me shredded it's ridiculous yeah, muscly yeah just it's it's literally superman manifest in a real human and and that proximity for me works really well. So I mean, I, for humor, you spend time with yeah, me. Yeah, I want to sure. laugh more. I mean. hang out with Garrett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just giggle after ourselves. But I think like once once you know that, then it's like optimized for it, right? Like that's like when you say like, what does money mean to me? Money means designing my life. Like literally design it. You know this. Like I'm very intentional about my year and the energy flows throughout the year, the week. What do I do in the mornings versus the afternoons? Yeah. Like I don't control the experience of time. That's probably a better way to frame it. But I can control the energy of the experience. Like, yeah. and that's what I'm. I'm. I'm always thinking to myself. Like I'm gonna go do something. Like even even training. I saw my buddy uh, Brandon the other day. He did a, a reel, and he said, hey, when I train, I smile. And I forgot that because I used to smile when I raced an Ironman. And now when I went to the gym, I literally was trying to smile. In the thick of the pain, in full exhaustion, and full muscle fatigue, I tried to smile because he said the smiling makes the reps funner. And so it's like it's all these little things when I think of, like, how does the money work? Well, the money allows me to invest in things that will make it funner. And you, and you also like, I think that's key is you value yourself and you also know that if people don't pay for something, don't pay attention to it. So that combination of you valuing yourself and what mm -hmm. you offer and having people value themselves enough to make the investment, even I'm your friend and I make the investment to be an elite. Yep. Right. You invest in me to come speak at your event. Totally. We exchange money. Because it's just a, it's it's the way that we it, 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 there's acknowledge an energetic each other. Ex, there's an energetic component of it. I mean, think, if we just think about the idea of 
like I, if somebody's going to come and work with me, you know, would I want them to pay a little bit free or do I want them to pay a lot? The person that's paid a lot relative to them gets the result. And, and the energy, dude, they come ready to go. The student, they prep. Dude, some people, before they ever come here, yeah. 60 days prior, they buy. They show up 15 pounds lighter, right. organized, because they were like, I, don't want to, I didn't want to waste my time. The person that I invite for free, they literally roll in here sloppy face, not prepared, energy's poopy. Like, I feel it. I just don't want to be around A that. A trillion dollars is exchanging hands every day. Yep. And when a dollar spent, it's not the end of the dollar. It gets to be spent again. And so think of this. If we choose to go with what's cheapest and what's the least valuable, we vote with our dollar for a more mediocre society. Mm. We slow down the exchange because less dollars exchange hands. And what if our vote was for excellence in ourselves and others? Highest level. We would accelerate velocity. GDP. Exchange would create wealth. Output or GDP would go up. And we wouldn't have to print more money to manipulate all this bullshit all the time, right? Like, like yeah. I, I mean, I hope people can understand the depth of, of what I'm saying here. It's bigger than them. Right? It's, it's, if we're all one, we're all, you know, one energy. Where If what I do to you, I do to myself. If we're all coming from the same place and going back to the same place. If I'm trying to do, get something from you, for nothing, I'm actually devaluing myself and you, slowing down the velocity, lowering the exchange, delaying the lesson, and voting for a shitty world. No pressure, people. You know what's funny? You just reminded me last year when you spoke of my Empire Builder, um, I immediately added to my list to talk to Anna about. I never told you this. I have been a points hoarder. Like, like, dude, I have <laughs> millions of for hotels, oh, for flights, oh, everything, points, millions, and I told Ann, all goes. We gotta spend it. We hired a guy, Eli. He's our points guy, and he's and we're we're. I said because I I feel like I was constraining the economy. What am I doing? What do I just because I'm like, ooh, look, 13 million points. Who cares? What am I doing with Matt, that? What do you do? You got a private jet, bro. Dude, it <laughs> It's like it, it was so weird that I was not. I just it was it, again. Even at my level, right? There was this little sliver of my sliver life that, that came was still, from childhood somewhere. Hundred percent. Remember the, se the second time I spoke at Empire yeah. Builder, I don't know if I had said this. I said the story of our money is merely the story of our childhood pain and trauma that we've yet to face and process. You said that, right? Yeah. And it's In like, Laguna. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's like because that's that's the deal. So, dude, I'm I'm uh, I'm Dan the point user man that's like 2024 we're trying and i said let's let's deplete and replenish let's deplete like let's just you know use it for our friends use it for stuff like just what are we doing here people hoard the miles on their cars they hoard the you know things in their house like there's what there's good is something weird, without utility yeah, yeah. like when i had my bentley that's a good frame what's good something without utility well, well let's even frame this the majority of the population if i use this word I promise you they think it's a bad word. Expense. Mm. They view expense as negative. It will even have a, a filling in their stomach if I say it. Expense. Mm. What good is money without expense? It's the only way oh, money is, is utilized. Is, is, so if we view how we utilize money as an, expense. as an expense or negative, by the way, your income, someone else's expense. My income, someone else's expense. So think about the push and pull. If we're taught to lower our expenses, we're lowering other people's ability to create value, which slows everything. I mean, dude, you know, this is fun to talk to you about because you get it. I get it because that was actually how I got one of my clients to finally get his wife on board to hire a house cleaner because she didn't want to. And I said, you got to use the frame of, do you care about this community? Well, here's what I did. Do you care about creating jobs? Because you're every time you clean your house, you're taking somebody's job away. Well, you brought up you brought up uh, like just who you spend your time with. So when we had our first kid, it like was it was a little tough because I felt like Breck was a higher priority than me, and I was like, hey, we're gonna be still together when Breck leaves the house. Yeah. Right. And I was like, we should get you a nanny for at least part time so you could have some free time. She's like, well, it'll make me a bad mom. And I was like, and we should do like, and I was thinking about all the support. So I got three really wealthy friends 
But I said, what would it take for us to get together? And Carrie could interview the girls. I can interview you guys. I just want to know what are your best practices in marriage? You guys have all been married longer. Your kids are more grown up. Like, what were the mistakes you made? What would you do differently? And I interviewed them. She interviewed the girls. And then we came back together. And by the end, we had hired this nanny that was so phenomenal. I mean, literally just loved our kids. She was so great when, when she moved. She's bawling in the car. Carrie's crying in the house. It was like a, you know, but Amber was fantastic. And and what it did is it gave Carrie freedom to, like, pursue some of her own interests and, and to, like, have some friends because a lot of times people get so isolated mm-hmm. during those times. But there was, like, this old paradigm of to be a good mom, she had to always be around yeah. instead of take care of herself and make herself the greatest asset and, and be able to show up with more That's energy. So because right? sometimes we believe, that, like, somehow quantity matters, but it's quality that matters, not quantity. Quantity is scarcity. Yeah. Quality is abundance. That's interesting. You're right. A lot of time is not high valued it's the constraint of time of like the if you and i were just watching tv all night last night instead yeah. of talking like not valuable but if we spent a whole week together we just yeah we're on insta the whole time yeah what if we didn't put mics in front of our face right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so so yeah it's all about the numbers like if if you were to summarize like because you know that like what money is how it's an energy how you view it um yet most people believe that their self-worth and their net worth the same thing Mm, that's that's an interesting one because i actually think that your self-worth has to precede the net worth every time like right off the bat if talk about your your view of self-discipline i mean and and how like if we make these personal commitments internally mm -hmm. but if we don't actually do that how it that's how we wrote at it so so like a lot of people they see the way i communicate and operate and they say like dan you you have a lot of self-confidence and i go but what you need to understand is the confidence doesn't come from some like made up place the confidence comes from keeping the commitments that i make myself in private not the ones i make publicly because those are easier to commit to right especially if you make them to other people like most people would rather break their own commitments yeah i made the mistake of telling Garrett White I was going to do a triathlon and now I have to do a stupid you guy to do a triathlon it, because of somebody right? else yeah I just I, I think that's an interesting concept that your self-worth precedes your net worth every time like it, it's it's impossible for it to be the other way like how 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 come is it hard for people to part with money to invest in themselves when it's so easy to part with their money to invest in a fund Dude. Like that's that's just a strange Dude, they just phenomenon. Don't, they don't understand that like the nor- narrative they're telling themselves. Even hiring a financial manager that doesn't know shit, like they're they're most I don't know if you know the staff. I don't I don't I don't mean to judge people, but I mean what do I got to go on? It's like I look at you, I look at your life. I know you're not even listening to yourself because I can look at your appearance. So you're not even taking care of yourself. So you don't like make good decisions for your own life and then you're gonna manage my money and i look at your life and i'm like i don't even think you manage your money and and at the end of the day a lot of this stuff it's like the fees and the structure like most people have no idea that that person the end of the day if the market tanks it happened to my dad happened to my my wife's parents like they they're just like deal with it and yeah. you thought you had a buddy for 27 years. You thought you had right, a person that had your it's back. It's some expensive golf. It's an expensive yeah, dinner. Yeah, it turns out they didn't have your back. They didn't even control your back. They weren't even involved in what was happening behind your back. They were just a person doing this. And and then when it goes south, they're like, sorry, you knew the risk. It's like, well, And this is, this is my entire belief system that I really hope that the world can listen to to and here because it will change their life if we invest money in something we don't understand and get a return that's called gambling there it's not investing yep if you don't grow yourself and your knowledge while you grow your money the energy gets out of whack you won't be a proper steward and you'll find a way to lose it one way or the other hence why people that win the lottery, lottery all that athletes yeah because but, but who else is teaching like i don't know because yeah. i remember a co- uh I think it was my mentor. He said to me, he said, no, it was Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn had this great line. He said, you should hope if somebody gave you a million dollars, you become a millionaire really quick. And I just love that frame because he's like, just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you're a millionaire. A millionaire knows how to make the million dollars become, they become valuable enough to attract the money. Right. Like the skill sets that you have right now, if you decided to start at zero for the hell of it. The skill sets don't go away. The relationships don't go away. So these are the two more precious forms of capital, mental 
and relationship capital. Yep. And if we think that financial capital is what's valuable and we circumvent mental and relationship capital, it is increasingly difficult to recreate or sustain because we don't have the, they the don't proper know, knowledge know of people. This right? is I think it was Andy Frisella said this once, too. Because he struggled for like eight years, he created uh, First Form and Seventy Five Hard, and you know, and you know he's, he, I mean he's crazy wealthy, right? Like super wealthy, probably a billionaire on his way, and he talks about it often. Like I'm glad it took me a while to figure this out because at each stage I became capable of receiving right. the wealth stewardship. Yeah, like he's like, now I have my family office. If I would have got this money before I had the infrastructure, I would have, I, somebody would have took advantage of me. Yeah. So I, was, I would have made a yes. decision that was uninformed because I, I almost needed to grow with my wealth. That's why you see to, like old wealth continues to be really intelligent and new wealth becomes yeah. very volatile. Yeah, because they haven't understood how to create the infrastructure to, 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 to be a steward. Yeah, have, so you, I, have you listened to the, the Jay-Z song, Story of OJ? Well, probably. I just didn't well, know he talks that. about like how he went and bought this, this car that depreciated. He goes, where he could have bought a $2 million property in Dumbo that was now worth $8.2 million. He goes, I'm feeling pretty Dumbo, you know, yeah. just joking about it. He's like, hey, I'm trying to give you this education for 99, a million dollar education for 99 cents, like using his lyrics to, to talk try to about, educate financial. Right. Yeah. Like to, to talk about stewardship and all this kind of stuff, yeah. because really in the world of rap, it's all about, hey, here's the chains, here's the cars, here's the all this kind of stuff, which is demonstrating this false Hollywood life. And he's saying, hey, like he became a billionaire because he did something with well, it. Well, think about this. I, I actually think, you know, when I look at objectively, people that have a poor mindset around money, when they get money, they look at what they can buy. People that have a mediocre mindset, they look at money as a way to increase the ability to borrow credit score, loans, bank accounts, whatever, like bigger house, whatever. But, you know, th that's the middle level. And then the highest level, they get extra money. They go, what can I invest it in? They literally, like, I mean, wealthy people, you give them an extra $10 million, and they don't go, oh, what kind of car or house can I buy? They go, where can I deploy this to make a million dollars a year on this money? Yep. Like, people don't get if, you know, one of my favorite frames to, to offer people, I did it on the hike on Tuesday, this kid, Jesse, you know, because he, he just, his energy was low. And I said, Jesse, if I put $10 million in your bank account, how would you feel? He's like, well, I don't even know how to, I wouldn't even know what that would feel like. And I go, let's pretend. He's like... And he says to me, I feel okay about that. I was like, I like grabbed him and I shook him. I go, dude, what needs to be true for you? Like, dude, 10 million mediocre returns, 800 grand a year, dude. Like divided by 12, that's per month that you got to spend. And it's still there and it'll pay that forever. Like you're telling me you'd feel pretty good. He's like, you know what he said to me? He goes, if that was true, I'd be worried that I wasn't living a life that my girls would look up and be proud of because I'd be scared I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, at, when I when I spoke at SAS Academy, I took people to this exercise, where I had them pretend they had an extra ten dollars per month every month, no taxes. Then I went to a hundred. Yeah, I love that. And then I went I to a thousand. That. And yeah. it was all about getting people to go. What point? Stop thinking about yourself. Yeah. What point about, does it become about other people? See, because a billion dollars sounds like a lot of money if you're thinking about what you could buy. It sounds insignificant if you think about the impact you can make. Yeah. And that is so freeing because I, you know, I start my book with what would you do with a billion dollars? It's the first line in Money Unmasked because when I thought of that in my 20s, I felt small because I didn't know. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, and I've had people critique, oh, you could buy everyone a house. Well, what good is that going to do? Yeah. There's taxes to those houses. There's maintenance. Oh, dude, there's that's, that's a big, like, again, like that's, people that are, have a poor mentality, they're like, oh, I buy my friends new cars like no you wouldn't because you know you're gonna have to deal with the they're gonna be pissed off it breaks down who's gonna pay for it who's gonna pay their insurance look at every lottery winner yeah. and read about it right like literally you think you're gonna do that and then if you did it they're actually gonna be upset because their relationship with stuff is flawed and they're gonna and, take it out on and you. it's amazing that people think if i had a billion dollars then i would do this yeah no, no, you get the billion dollars because, because you do that you now yeah. and who you are, that becomes the byproduct. And that's personal that's the self-worth over yep. the net worth. It so. comes the self-worth has to come first. That's yeah, a and then brain. and then when you have the self worth, you can get your macros right, get veins in your arms and six pack abs <laughs> and, 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 and and protein bros. You know what I'm saying? Well, There's thanks, levels man. to the game. Nah, dude, it is an honor, <laughs> thanks man. For, uh, thanks for thanks for doing this. It was fun. Super cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. 
And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.